Births are insanely expensive, but did you know that you can have a baby with all prenatal procedures by an experienced certified midwife and your own private doula for only $500? In this video, I'm gonna specifically show you how. So this video is for dads or dads-to-be, biological or otherwise, who are looking for a crash course on the cost of giving birth. We're also gonna talk about Medicaid, tax benefits, and financial pitfalls. This is a channel for men who wanna take an active and educated role in the birth of their babies. But just like life, it's gonna come at you fast. Here's the number one reason for hospital admissions. Car doors, friend or foe? Surprisingly, no, it's actually labor and delivery. The US has the most complex health system in the world saying, oh, this procedure is anywhere from $200 to $2,000. I wanna know what I'm actually having to pay. So the numbers you see here, they're gonna be a good representation of the US as a whole. Births are expensive, but the babies are priceless. There's four main ways to pay for birth. Three places you can give birth. Two directions, that baby's coming out. But there's one big decision you have to make. How are you gonna pay for it all? Oh, I forgot my coffee. All right. This is a really loud. There we go. So there's three main options of places you can give birth. Hospitals, birthing centers, or at home. Hospitals charge an average cost of about $11,000. A birthing center is a medical facility for the labor and childbirth experience in a family-friendly, home-like atmosphere. Midwife-assisted home births are about the same price. Here's a quick rundown on prenatal genetic testing, which usually involves testing the baby for abnormalities and hereditary and genetic disorders. You should be aware that some diagnostic tests like CVS and amniocentesis do carry a small risk of miscarriage. I want you and your partner to discuss these questions. What will you do with the test results? If it indicates that your baby has a birth defect, what are you gonna do with that information? Also, how accurate are the results? Prenatal screening is not perfect. Inaccurate results exist and and they do vary from test to test. Weighing the risks of prenatal tests against knowing the value of the results. You get to decide which, if any, genetic tests you want done. So just be sure that you take the time to research them and discuss them together before you agree. Let's talk about prenatal costs. During the first trimester, you're gonna see your doctor or midwife monthly, with co-pays averaging about $30. They'll check her height, weight, blood pressure, um, fetal heart rate, and the baby's growth. The most common test, HCG, it's based basically a fancy pregnancy test, and that's about $40. Prenatal vitamins, a one month supply costs about $15. And then there's the ultrasound. Your provider may or may not order this, $400. During your second trimester, your partner will continue her monthly prenatal visits. She may also need the following, glucose screening, which is a test for gestational diabetes. This is about $100. The main ultrasound during a pregnancy occurs about this time, at 20 weeks, $400. Although some people choose to opt out of this one. My wife and I paid about $100 dollars for a fun little gender reveal ultrasound for my wife and I and our moms, but that was not covered under insurance. By your third trimester, basically every test that needs to be done has been done. Now your monthly checkups will be by weekly checkups from uh, weeks 28 through 36, and then weekly until your baby's born. Birthing classes help you prepare for labor and delivery, and they're often covered by insurance. Classes average about $125. So the largest expense you can expect during this last phase of pregnancy labor and delivery. You absolutely need a plan to pay for the birth or you could be easily stuck with a $20,000 bill. Every single item will be itemized on that final bill. It's common to be billed not only for each doctor that sees you, but for every pill, every IV pouch. This is probably the only place in the world where you're gonna be charged $5 for one ibuprofen pill. With insurance, you can expect to pay about $5,000 out of pocket when the dust finally settles. If your partner needs to be induced, has an unexpected C-section, or receives an epidural, the charges will skyrocket. Check out our video all about doulas. There's a link in the description below. I heard a quote that explains it well. Birth is a natural event that sometimes needs medical intervention, but we've turned it into a medical event that we sometimes do naturally. Many interventions have unintended effects. Often these effects are new problems that are solved with further intervention. For example, in many hospitals, the only option that women have for pain relief is the epidural, which is about $2,000. Once an epidural is started, there's often a cascade of additional costly interventions. 
intentions. A nasty surprise that a lot of people get when the bill arrives is that their anesthesiologist was out of network, even though the hospital was in network. My baby and my wife were billed separately, so there were two deductibles. If the hospital bills your partner and your baby separately, oftentimes you're responsible for two deductibles, a deductible for each of you. So there's two directions that this baby's coming out. Good old fashioned vaginal delivery or cesarean. Cesarean or C-section is a surgical procedure which involves uh, incisions in the abdomen and uterus. And this actually accounted for 33% of births in, in the US. My brother and sister and I, we were all born C-section. And in the short time since my brother was born here in the United States, it's skyrocketed by 5 100%. A C-section is a major operation that involves anesthesia, long hospital stays, and higher instances of morbidity and mortality, which means more resources used and more dollars spent. There are no C-sections at home births or birthing centers, so in those situations, your partner will need to be transferred to a hospital, which usually requires an ambulance and hospital costs. I once paid $1,500 for a three-mile ambulance trip. However, vaginal deliveries at hospitals with complications like fetal distress or excessive bleeding requiring an operating room have the highest average price tag of any birth. There's four main ways to pay for birth. Health insurance, Medicaid, MediShare, and cash. All health plans inside and outside of the healthcare.gov marketplace must legally cover them. Medicaid, 20% of births in the United States are paid through Medicaid. A hospital bill is jointly funded by the federal and the state governments. These programs cover pregnant women and their children below certain income levels. There's a link in the description for how to apply to Medicaid and CHIP. Home births. If you wanna learn more about the incredible benefits of a home birth, there's a link in the description below. So the average cost of a home birth is about $3,000. Talk with your midwife about payment plans. You'll also likely be able to pay a little bit at a time to your midwife, which is basically which is basically a payment plan. Everything is usually included. All the pregnancy checkups, the labor and delivery, the postpartum visits, no co-pays here. About a third of all home births are eligible for insurance reimbursement. I found a really great article with a step-by-step -step guide on how to get your insurance company to reimburse for a home birth midwife. Gotta turn off the ice maker. Gotta turn off the fan. Okay. Have a plan in place so that if an emergency happens and you have to be transferred to the hospital, you're sent to the hospital in your own insurance network, helping to avoid any unexpected and expensive medical bills. If your partner is low risk, you can have a baby delivered in the comfort of your own home by a licensed, experienced midwife and your own private doula for only $500. Let me show you how. It's called MediShare. Healthcare sharing groups are organizations in the United States in which healthcare costs are shared among members who have common ethical or religious beliefs. So just a word of warning, you would need to sign some sort of statement of beliefs to agree that you do in fact share this same ethical or religious belief with their organization. This is necessary for the federal exemption to apply. I pay a little over $300 per month, which covers 90% of my family's medical needs, up to $13,000, after which they cover 100%. $300 for nine months prior to birth, plus a $200 startup fee equals $2,900. This then will cover $5,000 of your hospital bill or midwife bill and $500 for a doula. MediShare will also cover up to $250,000 if there are any complications during birth. Hospitals, birth centers, and of course home birth midwives often have maternity packages. So they offer all the normally itemized features of a delivery for a flat fee. The federal government gives you a credit for taking on the hefty responsibilities of parenthood. The child tax credit provides a credit for up to $2,000 per child under the age 17 for a middle income family. So there you have it. Leave a comment below and subscribe to the channel for more labor and delivery advice for dads. Daddy needs your help. Can you go like this? Like and subscribe. Like poop.